Hey, everybody. Welcome to MFS and the Hub's Thursday Fantasy Baseball Strategy Show. I'll be hosting today, Casey Scheinwald. Dr. Dan, who is usually our beloved leader, is unavailable, so I humbly try to fill in the gaps. Although it can't be that hard when I'm accompanied by my co-host here and the best in the business, Ross the Boss. Hey, everybody. Welcome, Vlad to the Bone, Casey Scheinfeld. We just call him Vlad. We don't call him Casey. It's boring. We, we call we call people, I'm the boss. That's Vlad. Easy, easy, deasy. Easy to remember. Uh, I'm excited, Casey. Got baseball season is moving in. There's some, uh, you know, the Reds were postponed today, so I'm happy about that. But, I mean, there's some real, like, weird stuff going on in baseball i mean i mean the yankees are 11 and 3 i believe and they're like in first place and they're playing great baseball best start since 2000 i mean you're a yankee what's what's the excuse of your great start what is it the excuse i think we're getting a little bit lucky our run differential is actually third behind the orioles and the red sox in our own division so um we've been pitching well beyond we're supposed to without Garrett Cole. We've gotten timely hitting. Aaron Judge is batting less than 200, and look how we're doing. So I am not – I mean, the Guardians have a plus 35 run differential. The Kansas City Royals at 8-4, and four, about to go wow. to 9-4, and four, have a 29-run differential. We only have a 15-run differential. So I, I, I think we're getting lucky. We're winning, we're winning games when, when people aren't playing very well. Kansas City is going to sweep the world champions, Houston Astros. I mean, again, yeah, they scored I, nine runs in the first inning today. I mean, I can't explain it. It's in Houston, also. Can you imagine being an Astro fan winning the World Series and you have season tickets? Oh, you know what? I'll, let's let's go to the Kansas City series. Let's see what's happening. And your World Series champs get swept by the last place team, the uh, Kansas City Royals, which is I don't want to say it's embarrassment, but it's not good. Um, but I mean. Baseball's full swing, Casey Scheinfeld. I'm excited. I know he didn't get a hit last night. He got an RBI. That's all he did is Jackson Holiday. I mean, you think he'll be rookie of the year? I mean, what how good is this kid? And what do you see him? Uh, well, how, what's your what's your take on him? I think he's going to be a stud. I don't think he's going to be a stud this year. Um, okay. you know, most of the the projections I've seen for him have been somewhere in the 260 range with between 10 and 12 home runs and 10 and 15 stolen bases this year, which is, don't get me wrong, for a 20-year-old or 21-year-old, however old he is coming up, that's pretty impressive. But if I had him on my team in a redraft league, I'm putting him on the market. I'm trying to trade him now. I have him in a few leagues, Casey. I'm going to do. I'm going to take your advice. I'm going to do that. He's making the headlines. Because I think people buy the hype. And, and you can, I mean, yes, he's going to qualify at second and short, um, but shortstop is so deep and second baseman. If you drafted a decent second baseman, the value you can get for Jackson holiday far exceeds the value he'll give you, I think in fantasy baseball. I mean, do you, if you were a betting man, would you bet him to be the rookie of the year or do you take the kid from, from the Rangers? No, uh, I, my money's on Wyatt Langford in the American league. If I had to, to bet on one, um, you know, I think, that Jackson Holiday is going to be good and he's going to be a, a, a staple for a long time. But um, I don't think he's going to outpace either Evan Carter or Wyatt Langford in Texas. Chris Atwater is here. Your buddy. Mr. He says, Mr. Rowling, the other Rowling Jackson Rowling rookie Rowling is looking pretty good. Actually, Chris, there are three Jackson rookies. There's Jackson Churio, Jackson holiday and jackson merrill so um and they're and all michael pretty, jackson no he's dead but uh yes those are all so, three good jacksons you mentioned power speed and contact yep uh jackson i believe you're talking about jackson churio because he's been he's been lights out he's already i think the best hitter in milwaukee but um and, and remember the contract he oh, signed Casey, he, signed an, he signed an unbelievable contract with the brewers without playing one game in major league baseball it was like they signed this kid i was like what are they doing nine million dollars and all of a sudden, I mean, I, I knew who he was, but I didn't believe he was as good as he is. I mean, this kid is a phenom. Uh, yeah. But I, I, I mean, good, 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 good job by the Brewers signing him because. Yeah. Milwaukee took know. a page out of Atlanta's book when Atlanta signed Ozzy Albies and yeah. Ronald Acuna to those very team friendly long deals that are paying off like gangbusters for him now. Are you shocked, Casey, 
when you read that Trevor's story is that for six months with soldier soldier surgery, are you are you we, we am I shocked? shocked? <laughs> no, I'm not shocked. He's been injury. Oh. I mean, he's been injury prone for a long time. I feel bad for the guy because the talent is off the charts. We know how good of a baseball player oh. he is. Um, but uh, apparently he also fractured a bone somewhere in the shoulder when he separated it, and that's what's really causing the 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 major issue. So. I mean, I hope for his sake, it's the shorter end of that three. Uh, what is it? Six months or more? But six months. He's gone for the my, season. My it's fear, over. my fear, is whether he'll make it back at all. Um, I don't remember this. Beginning of the season, Otani didn't hit the. It did not hit a home run the first week of the season. I mean, people were saying, "Oh my God, the Dodgers spend all this money. How dare they?" You know, Otani's overrated. Now, in the past five games, he has three home runs. Uh, you know, yeah, I know he's going through that trouble with this interpreter. Now the story's coming up bigger that the interpreter lied with a bank call saying he was Otani. That he turned um, notifications off so nobody would see him. Very, I mean, that. very. I mean, and Otani's not like protecting him. Otani's like cooperating with the police and everything else. I mean, this guy's yeah. going to go away for a long time. I mean, it's, this isn't I just, a, this isn't like stealing from 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 your you know from your mom's purse this is serious money and it's a serious allegation million at least they're saying i just want to be in a financial position someday to not notice that somebody's taking 16 <laughs> million dollars from me like, or giving or, or 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 letting your friend be in charge of your finances and yeah. letting him like you know letting him like write your bills and pay your car payments i mean it's, it, it makes no sense it really doesn't i mean it's it's i mean i i blame otani just because the reason they have business managers is because they do that kind of stuff for you. Yeah. Not some guy you find on the street that that's wearing a horrible hairpiece that 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 doesn't know what he's doing financially. Is it obviously he has he has many issues. Well, he has some addiction issues. Well, you're you're the therapist. Do you think he has an addiction, or do you think he just wanted to get rich quick, thinking he knows everything about about sports? I mean, he, um, he could be addiction. I don't know I mean, if there's a know. difference between the two. I think they both can exist. All right. So in addition to Otani, obviously that's kind of the big news in baseball. But the good news of that and the, the fantasy impact of that is the federal investigators have ruled out Otani being involved in any way. So there's no fear of him being suspended. Um, Zero. For, for your for your hitters. So um, other, I mean, one of the things I've been impressed with is if you look, the Yankees are 10 and three. They were projected to come in third, second or third at best in their division. The Kansas City Royals are about to be tied for first in their division. The Pittsburgh Pirates are leading the NL Central. And <laughs> the I, I, it's just amazing how good, how how some of these teams who we projected to be pretty poor are. And the, the Astros are in last place in the it. AL West. I, mean, I love how the crazy. Astros are in last place. I, I love how that team, you know, always like strives to be a great team, and now they're in last place. I, I don't think it's going to last. I mean, again, I, I think the cream lies to the top, and I think Houston will be competing for first place in their division. But for now, they're in last place. But I, you know, they'll they'll do like one of these ten or twelve game winning streaks, and they'll be back and they'll be back. In well, the thing that there. needs to happen is their bullpen needs to figure it out. You know, they spent all that money to bring Josh Hader in, and somehow, you know, he upset somewhat the delicate balance. I guess that is a relief pitching bullpen, and they've been terrible. All of they've them. been they've been horrible, and I mean the Rangers are not playing much better. But the Rangers got good news to groom. And Scherzer are both throwing the ball. And Scherzer says he'll be back in May. DeGroom, they're saying July, but if DeGroom progresses like he's doing right now, maybe June. So if they get, Casey, if they get, or Vlad, whatever you want, whatever you want me to call you today, if they want, if they, if they get those two guys back, they'll compete again in, in their division, obviously. Their, their, their problem is they're pitching. Gray, is not that great. I mean, they have some pitchers, but they're very mediocre at best. What do you think? Yeah. No, I mean, the Rangers, well, they're currently in second place in the West. No, they're in is first out there. So you throw DeGrom and Scherzer into that rotation, and suddenly I, you have to figure them a lock for at least a wild card. And the way the Astros are playing right now, probably the favorite out West, and Seattle's look terrible. 
too. So um, the AL West, yeah. I mean, Luis Castillo has a 6.89 ERA. Um, <sighs> you know, George Kirby's been okay. Uh, Logan Gilbert's been okay. But their offense has been terrible. With the exception of Mitch Haniger, nobody's hitting in that in that offense. So Julio Rodriguez, his value, I mean, if you, I know you have him in a couple of leagues. You can't trade him right now, even though you want to get him oh. off your roster because he's disappointing you. But he's you're going to be getting him for pennies on the dollar at best. No, in dynasty leagues, of course, you keep him. You can bench him like I did. You know, I'm starting Christian Yeah, I Rillich. think you would do that. Tearing the cover off the ball. Yeah. I mean, Christian Yolich is, is probably one of the big surprises in fantasy baseball this year. I mean, he's hitting like he was hitting like back in the MVP days. I mean, his his, um, his stock has gone up considerably. I mean, he's playing great baseball. And Milwaukee will always be, you know, they'll always compete. So, you know, there you go. I mean, if, if, if you want to center yeah, I mean, on a guy in fantasy baseball that you may, you know, you, you may want to kind of trade for, I think Yolich is just going to keep it up. I don't see him dropping at all. I mean, I really don't. I think he'll – how about this? I think he'll compete for the MVP. I'll say that right now. Wow. What do you think about those words? Um, I, I, I think I think he's – I think if he's healthy and he stays healthy, I think he'll have a great year. And um, I just think he's he's at the right age. He's uh, he's has the right line. He has people around him. And I just feel his confidence is up. And I I think he's back where he was when he won the, when he was when he was MVP of the National League. Um, at the bold so, state. I mean, look, it's going to be hard for him to compete with the Acunas of the world, but we all know he's capable of it. Matt hitting. I mean, everybody's like Acuna, Acuna, Acuna. Acuna is not hitting hitting the ball that well. I mean, he's he's not he's not hitting home runs right now, and he's he's not getting on base. So Acuna, right now, if the season stopped, he would not be in the talks of MVP. I mean, he. I know he's the favorite, but I'm telling you. The time is ticking on him. So if he does, if you better start hitting the ball and hitting, getting on the stat sheet because he's not. Um, yeah. Matt is doing a lot of work down down in Atlanta, but he's not. A, you know, Acuna is not is not uh, all that hype and being the number one pick in fantasy baseball. He's not the guy uh, right now. No, um, I know, but and and I agree with you. But I, there's just so many good players in the National League. You got Mookie Betts, who's ripping the cover off the ball. You got Ellie De La Cruz, your favorite uh, Cincinnati Red, who's playing out of his mind right now. But yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, the stats on him top. is crazy. I mean, De La Cruz is like the strikeout king. He strikes out a lot. If, if we take stats right now and and just, and just multiply by how many games and make it 162, he would have like 250 strikeouts. <laughs> that's, that's, like a, that's like a league record. Yeah. Um, that's you know, that, that's, that's, that's like Dave Kingman talk. Uh, it's an old reference case. And, uh, but I mean, De La Cruz is stealing bases. I think he's second in the league and he's hitting home runs. So I love De La Cruz. Um, I, I don't care if he strikes out. I don't, I don't really care. Uh, people send him down to the minors. He's striking out too much. No, he's hitting too, too sixty. He's getting, you know, he steals bases and he hits home runs. I don't care if he strikes out. So let him strike out. I'd rather him strike out than, Hit a fly ball and and it, it's I'd rather hit, go for the home run. That's what everybody does. Chicks dig long balls. Go. <laughs> Quoting well, the old nineties commercial. So pistol yeah. RX, pistol uh prescription. I don't know. I put twenty five percent of my fab budget on holiday. Very high for me, but I wanted him on one of my teams. Time will tell if it's a good investment. What do you think, Ross? I think it's, I mean, you know, you're falling into the hype. I mean, he's the, he's the cover boy of our show this week. He's the cover boy of, I'm sure, all the baseball talk and all the baseball magazines and all the baseball yeah, websites. Week, yeah. I guarantee it. This week, like you said, I think he'll have a good year. I don't think he's, I don't think he's going to be working of the year. I agree with you, Casey. I think it's going to be Wyatt, Wyatt Langford um, in the American League and maybe Yamamoto in the National, but we'll see. But I, I if, if it's a re redraft league, He's a, he'll be a, he'll be like an average player, but if it's yeah, a dynasty think... league or keeper league, yes, yes, yes. Oh yeah, they dynasty or keeper league. Um, you got a you got a bargain at twenty five percent of your fab budget to get Jackson yeah. Holiday. If it's a if it's a redraft league, pistol. The one thing I'll tell you, and I said it a little bit earlier, is the hype on him is so high. You can probably get somebody to overpay for him right now, and it might be worth it if you have other weaknesses on your team that you need to address. But yeah, I agree. And, and you see the video when he when his coach told him he was going to go to the major. Uh, I sent it to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't that excited. I you know I think the, the guy for um, the Orioles, Andy Rushman, was a lot better. 
Um, he was just kind of like, I think he kind of knew. I don't know. I think he took off. But you, if you haven't seen it, Google it, watch it, um, you know, Jackson Holiday. Did you see the classy uh, message from Tony Kemp afterwards? Because Tony no, Kemp's uh, one who got DFA'd so he could get, so they could make room for um, Holiday on the 40-man roster. And they and he put a very classy kind of congratulations and encouraging and we always knew you'd be great type of thing. So hats off to Tony Kemp for that because the guy just got, DFA, like he's not going to be in that major league clubhouse ever again. So that's no, no, I know. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I think he'll he'll be on a he'll be on a major league baseball team. I disagree. I'll, yeah, you know, no, I'm not saying that. I said in that major league rut locker room. Oh, ever yeah, again. he won't he's be in done with the Orioles. Yeah, he. I'm sure he got all his stuff. He he got all his um all his personal items. I'm sure he put them in his car and he left. But he'll he'll get another job. Tony Kemp's a good utility guy. Yeah, he's a good utility guy. You All know. right, so Ross, we're what three weeks into the season now. Barely. What are the most yeah. important things for for fantasy fantasy managers to consider at this point? You know, where some players like you look at the we talked about Julio Rodriguez and Ronald Acuna who haven't gotten off to a good start. I think um, Francisco Lindor is like four for forty five at this point, batting below one hundred. <laughs> what do you do with these people who you drafted in the first or second rounds who are just scuffling like they're just like yeah i have julio Rodriguez. i mean what i did was and you can't trade them unless it's a dynasty league and somebody really wants them i get it but the redraft league you basically have to bench them and pick up a hot player who's you know you go to like past the past week stats and see who's hitting the ball off the cover who's on the free agent list um you really have no choice uh you, you can't keep having these go for four spots i mean trade turner is hitting that well? I mean, I'd bench him if I ha I don't have him in any leagues. I'm not a big fan of Trey Turner's, but I I would, you know, I would definitely uh, bench him right now. But I mean, there's 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 a list of high draft people that are not hitting the ball at all, um, yeah. and they'll get hot. And you got that's why you have to keep up to your with your team every week or every not every week every day. Um, you, you know, when players start getting hot, that's when you put them back in the lineup. But I. Um, some players are just not April players. I mean, that's all I got to say. I, I don't know. What else yeah. to, this, I have no theory. Like Kai Schwarber is known to not hit in April, right. but in June sure. and July, the guy hits the cover off. So I, my best suggestion case is to bench these guys pitchers. If your pitcher is not doing well, like let's say Castillo, the Seattle team, I I'd probably tell you to keep starting them, not bench them. This, he'll he'll pitch his way through it. He's too good of a pitcher, and he'll he's a strikeout guy too. So, um, you, you just got to hang with these pitchers. There's nothing else you can do. Um, yeah, and Brooks I, Durham, I, hi Brooks, thanks for joining the show. Said I got Julio too. Just have to play him. Never know when I'll get going. Look at Vinny Pasquantino the past two games. Yeah, Vinny P has been great last night and well, he's good he, again today. Did you see what um, he did today? Let me tell you his stats today. I was looking at Vinny because I did not suggest you draft him this year i I'm, I'm just not sold on him case if that makes sense i i just feel he's very up and down and he's just not consistent enough for me but i mean to the stats with Vinny, he he was he was he's three for four three rbis um no home runs but and he scored a run so i mean he yeah, had, he had a, a home run last day. night yeah i mean he, he he had a you know he had a great day he's only hitting 227 though and his yeah but that's because he was hitting well below 200 coming into yesterday so and his um, I, is I, I, I tend to i tend to agree and disagree with you i don't think you ever get rid of them or drop them if you counted on them but it, when when it's a 162 game season i don't mind yeah. missing one or two big games of a player so i might put him on the bench until he can can hit consistently i agree with ross on the things i look for on pitchers are a little different obviously you know if you look at luis castillo right his era is 6.89 his whip is somewhere around two, but he's only walking two batters per nine. He's still, his strikeouts per nine is at like 15. So those are both good numbers. And his batting average on balls in play is almost a hundred point higher, hundred points higher than it normally is. So there's just, there's also some indication there that Luis Castillo has been really unlucky in those three starts. And so one of the things I might do is find who has Luis Castillo and, and try to get him and try to buy him. That's how I would try to identify a buy low candidate. Because if I had him on my team and I wasn't looking at the peripheral stuff, uh, the advanced metrics, 
I would just see that he's killed three of my different categories for my uh, rotor, rotisserie team, and I'm and I might be willing to drop. Uh, to okay, trade. I have a question for you. Are you ready? Yeah. Well, one of the Cunha, over for four today. Once, uh, two thirty-three case, two thirty-three, and his slugging percentage. Yeah, and his slugging percentage is two seventy-nine. Okay, that's horrible to see no slugging percentage. Horrible. Oh, I know. Yeah. So, would you, if you had him on your would you bench him right now, or would you keep playing him every day? Or what do you do with Ronald Acuna right now? If you, if you I don't have him in any league. I don't either. But if I was lucky enough to get like a um, a Christian Yelich later in the draft as my fourth outfielder, or a Tyler O'Neill who's been ripping the cover off the ball as my fourth outfielder, you could have gotten him late in the draft. One of those guys, I wouldn't have a problem putting him on my bench and letting those guys fill in until he has. Uh, a good game. I don't need for somebody like Ronald Acuna. I don't need to see three or four consecutive good games before I believe in him again. If he just has one game where he gets, you know, he barrels up the ball really well. Um, I'm probably going to put him back in. Yeah. But I wouldn't mind sitting him. If I have another hot outfielder that I got lucky with drafting late, who happens to be uh, playing really well. Now here's another question for you. Now, if you don't have Ronald Acuna, which you and I don't have him in because I did not have the first pick in any of my draft. Um, and let's say it's a redraft. I'm not saying Dynasty or any right. of this other crazy stuff. Would you go out and try to get him and try to trade some of your hot players that that you that you that are doing great, let's say? Are you willing to trade them and try to get Ronald Cunha? yet? Do you think some of the owners are getting frustrated and they want they want to win now? Or do you think they'll just sit on the I, would, I wouldn't be opposed to sending a text message if I had a couple overachievers um, and, and saying to that owner or sending a message that says, hey, any interest in uh, getting rid of Acuna or in trading yeah. Acuna? Uh, let's say Steer. You. I mean, the guy's leading the league and I think he's the number one fantasy guy right now is Steer for Cincinnati. I mean, he's I think he's number two behind Betts, but yeah. I think Betts, well, they're, they're, they're really close next to each other. But Oh, yeah. But I mean, would you trade steer for Acuna if somebody dumb enough would do it? Oh my gosh, yeah, I would trade. I would too. You mean straight up? And I mean, maybe you throw in another pitcher, but I'm just saying, like right now, April Acuna. I'm just telling you, these owners are frustrated. They're upset. They're mad. They're not winning. They're you know they're they're losing their league because of Acuna's not hitting, and they maybe want somebody who's hitting. It's it's a psychologically and. And that's what you're you're good at is psychological stuff because you are a doctor. Um, just mentally, it could help that person like get through their fantasy baseball. I mean, does that make any sense at all? I'm just blabbing away. But yeah. I mean, it's 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 based. I mean, Gacy, basically, I think now is the time to go after some of these big stars. I really do. I really think right now, if you want to grab a big star without paying that much for him, I think. And like an Acuna, this is a time because, you know, he will start yeah, getting but, hot. You know, like Brooks Durham talked about, um, was it? No, it was Pistol. Pistol RX talked about he spent all that money on holiday. Um, if I had somebody like Yelich, somebody like Spencer Steer and a holiday, I would pa try to package those two together with a starter who's overachieving and, and see if I can steal Acuna like I mean if you were to throw I don't know Tanner Houck who's been awesome or even you know a, a Shoto Imanaga the rookie from Chicago who's been awesome Garrett Crochet another big name like some of these guys who are pitching really well Dylan Cease is pitching great um, Jared Jones, I, I love for Pittsburgh. I mean, yeah, there's there's a good. I would package the three of them in an offer for Acuna and hope that the guy um, is into the hype of Holiday and 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 takes the bait. Yeah, sure. What do you think about the the big hitter in Philadelphia for the Phillies? Where where you look too far from um what's his name uh, the left fielder the right fielder uh fielder. Uh, uh, Bryce Harper's name? the first base. Bryce Harper. Oh, is he? Uh, what do you mean by Bryce baseman. Harper? I mean, Harper's not hitting either. That's another one that's like, he's not. But he never, I mean, yeah, he's he's always been streaky. Um, 
What is he? Let me see his season numbers here. I mean, Bryce Harper. On season, he's only batting 214. Yeah, three home runs. I think he hit them all in one game. You're 100 percent right. Good memory. Um, so he has been ice cold. Now the weather has been terrible in the Northeast so far this baseball season. I don't know how much that plays a factor into it, but he's another one. If I need a first baseman, um, <laughs> that's funny. Pistol RX, uh, pistol prescription. His name is Pete, so he's Pistol Pete, but he's a pharmacist. So he he calls. I like that. That's a good one. What is it? He's referring to Pete Mayor. I guess he's a Pete Marovich Mer- fan. He calls himself Pistol uh, RX, and his name is Pete, and he's a pharmacist. So, got it. Um, um, so, who are your sell high candidates? Are the these guys who are playing super well kind of out of their minds at this point? Steer, um, steer, steer, steer. Um, well, you got I him. Mean, you got uh, Tyler O'Neill. You got Lourdes Gurriel. Has is a good time to playing sell. Great. Glass now is a good time to sell him. He he'll get hurt. Don't worry. Glass now yeah. had 14 games last start. Um, and in these top end pitchers, they're dropping like flies. I mean, if I mean Jaron Dur- Jared Duran, Jaron Duran has been great in Boston. These yeah, are all guys you can Duran really doesn't have you know, again, he's having a good year. I get it, but I, I don't think he'll get much for him. Um, but the big names who are playing up to their hype who are just over like Glass now. Yeah, Glasnow is awesome. Good. But if I had Glass now, I would sell him and get and and get get a couple other items because I I don't know how long he'll be able to pitch in that level. Uh, yeah, um, but it just scares me because all people say is the wear and tear on these arms, and they can only last so long. And Glass now's history is not good. <laughs> it's uh, uh, Stephen so, Kwan, uh Chris Atwater wants to know, is Stephen Kwan a sell high? Yes, I think he is. I, He's I mean, been... interrupt and, yeah, let me just say something about Stephen Kwan. He, he reminds me of like a Tim Anderson or like a player that's good, but a horrible fantasy player. Stephen Kwan is not like all, he's not that great fantasy guy. Guys, he's not good. Home runs, he's, he's gonna, not good. He's going to hit for a decent average. He's going to score a lot decent. of runs. Decent average, right? He's going to bat over three hundred oh, and score, but he's not going to drive in a don't lot. Over three hundred, yeah. I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't like steals him. and home runs. Yeah, I mean, he's a steel guy. He's not going to lead the league, of course, but he's a good steel guy. He's a California kid too, but I, I don't love him as a fancy player. I really, don't, I, I mean, I have players that I really respect as good players, but they're not good. If um, we're looking back to when we were younger, he reminds me a little bit of Brett Butler. You know, kind of that. I'm going to put the ball in play and get on base and be a pest on the base run, base pass, but not steal a ton. You know, Brett Butler was was one of the. No, he, he was. I mean, he was some Brett Butler really quick. L.A. Dodger. I mean, he was a great bunter. In all seriousness, I'm not being facetious. He could bunt the ball for a base any time, and he was fast. But yeah. players now, players now, in all seriousness, I mean, can you tell me one guy that you can say that can bunt people? I don't even see them bunt anymore. Do you? In all no, seriousness, I, the last the last... Time, I mean, I, when the pitcher got to bat in the National League, yes. But now with with the DH, yeah. do you ever see bunting any? I mean, I I don't. I haven't seen a somebody lay down a bunt in a long time. And if, no, if I'm, I, I'll they tried the last bunt. night in the Boston um, Baltimore oh, game. I was listening to it on the radio and. The guy ended up striking out um, trying to bunt. So that wow, shows you what, I mean, um, do you think he can practice that anymore, like in spring training? It, I don't it, think, not since the days of like David Eckstein and those kind of guys who could bunt all the time. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I, I don't think bunting is a skill anymore, which is sad because Eckstein and Butler, both those guys were excellent bunters and they got on base a lot from bunting. Now it's like, no one practices it. I, do they practice it in high school, college? I do people bunt then? I don't even know. I, I th- I'm, I'm sure oh. they practice it somewhere, but just not a lot. But maybe um, little league. <laughs> little league. We did. Pra- my my son was forced to bunt in little league. Yes. So there you <laughs> okay, go. There you go. Okay. Good. So at least at least some at least somewhere in some level they're bunting. But the but the whole bunting thing's over with. I used to love. I used to love to slip my hands up. And bunt. I was. I used to love doing that in games, but then it's over with. I wish I can bunt in softball. Uh, 
but yes, Casey, I mean, um, I really think that um, we'll see a lot of changes going on in baseball this season. I mean, I'm excited about like the like the Jackson holidays. I mean, I, I know you, you, he'll have an average year, according to you. I just hope he blows it up. I mean, if this guy can be like all the hype like De La Cruz was last year, I mean, you know, it'd be, yeah. it'd be great for baseball. It'd be unbelievable baseball. He plays in a great town of Baltimore. And his dad, as you know, was a great major leaguer and Matt Holiday, and he was in rooms. And as I mentioned before the show, his brother is two years younger. He'll be the first pick in the – three years younger. He'll be the first pick in the draft two years from now. And, you know, it's like – Somebody was saying it's like the ball family. I mean, they have like he has like two great kids that are that are going to be great major leaguers. I mean, it's it's crazy. I mean, who would think like a, a guy's son? He has two sons, and they're both like major leaguers. Yeah, that's like it, not since BJ and Justin Upton. Well, there's those Naylor guys for Cleveland, right? And the Naylor guy, yeah, they both homered yesterday. I think yeah, I, I saw Nashville, that. And yesterday it's National Siblings, siblings yeah. Day. Yeah. That was great. I, 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 I that was great. And the Guardians are playing good baseball. They're in first Double. place, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And we were giving Dr. Dan Ratner a bad time about him. But yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, people say baseball is, you know, it, it's people don't like it. It's not fast enough, whatever. But I, I think it's, I think this year is going to be a great year for baseball. I'm, I'm excited to, I mean, I love watching baseball. I love having all the channels. I flip around like crazy. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, but baseball for me is it's this is going to be a great year. All right, Jamal has a question for us. What up, my dudes? What do you think of Jamal Allen Winans the rest of the season? He got lit up today, but do you think he'll make some fantasy noise? He well, did have he did have a bad day today. My question to you is: A, when is Max Free come back? Because I think yeah. when Free comes back, I think Winans is gone. But he didn't help himself at all today. I I don't know. I think if he has one more bad start, I think back in where's the where's the minor league team? And where where's their Savannah? Savannah? Or, I don't know Savannah, where their minor Savannah, league is. Or, or Savannah. They have, are they Durham? Durham, wherever it is. I mean, they they have some really good young pitchers. A couple of them were brought up last season. Um, they might have to bring them up. Lopez is pitching well for Atlanta, which is good. He's somebody they, they signed. Yeah, Ronaldo Lopez. Yeah, he's been. Um, I mean, obviously, um, Jamal, I, the, he had a he had good prospect pedigree. Um, he got lit up today. I don't know how many more chances they're going to give him. Um, they might, if, if he doesn't do well now and they don't suffer any more injuries going forward, you might not see him until the rosters expand. Um, I would probably stay away from him unless I had a lot of space on my bench or uh, I'd wait till he was sent back to the minors and use a minor spot. If I have one on my bench, um, you're right. Max Fried has been terrible. Ross. Um, well, he's been hurt. Yeah. So I, but, but I, I still would rather have Max Fried going forward. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know when, when I, I don't know what's going on with him, but, Again, Elena has some importance pitching for Elena right now. He's 40 years old. And he's pitching lights out. I mean, he looks great. I mean, if I have a redraft league, yes, I would want him on my team. Dynasty, uh, it's a big roster, yes. But, I mean, Elena has a potent lineup. I mean, it's great. But I'm a little skeptical on their pitching right now. I don't know if the bit Strider out. When you lose, when you lose Strider, you're not nice. For the C almost I don't know how bad it is, but it's not good. Well, I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed because I own him in a league. I have some shares of him. So all right, Chris Atwater wants to know about Jordan Hicks, who's been pitching great in San Francisco now that they made him a starter. He wants to know if he can keep him up, keep it up. Um, I I love him. I St. Louis shows you how stupid they are. They they didn't make this guy a starter. He begged them to make him a starter and he wanted to leave town. I mean, he said, I listen, I, I like the bullpen, but I want to start. Give me the chance. Yeah. And St. Louis said, no, what we need in the bullpen, you know, whatever. But this guy has a mission. I love that. I love how he pitches in San Francisco. I feel that's a pitcher's, a pitcher's ballpark. And I just feel he'll get better and better after every start. And I think he, he's on a mission. 
And this guy throws hard. <laughs> Jordan Hicks, I mean, he's not, he's dropped his velocity some, I think, at, to, to be stretched out because he used to throw like 100, 102 yeah, as, a, as a, out of the bullpen for St. Louis. His issue has always been staying healthy. And so I think he can keep it up if you stay, if he stays healthy. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't count on him staying healthy. That's the only, that's my only concern. All right, Rocky. I do like him though. I do like him. Oh, I love him. I actually have him on a couple teams. Rocky too. Balboa is part of the show today, Ross. Do it. Say I, it. I, I, What's your I love impression? The, I have a horrible Sylvester Stone impression. My All opinion. right. Would you try to mean, terrain? Right now, um, he's like the poster boy for waiver wire for the month of April. So if I was doing a if I was the poster for the waiver wire for the month of April, right, be the cover. Uh, would I trade him? Yes, yes, yes. He's not. He's leading the league in stolen bases, so people are going to be attracted to that. He's hitting well. He's getting on base. He's got a little power. Milwaukee's winning, and all that together makes him very tradable right now because he's yeah, not. Yeah, he's a sell high kind of guy. Because the yeah, second I mean, he has three or four bad games and starts be platooned a little bit, his value goes from like here to literally zero. Um, so I yeah, would trade. Yeah. Him. Yeah, I would trade it, it, but he's and and the good the good selling point on is listen, if you want the leading stolen base leader in the National League, you better get him now because it's just going to get bigger and bigger. You got to be a salesman. But I mean, I I think I think yes, if I had Bryce and I do have him in some leagues and I have been trying making trade up, I would try to trade him this next week 100%. Yeah. So, I mean, there are he of this we talked about some sell high guys. He's way up there. Um, I actually would put Yelich on my sell high. You're predicting an MVP season for him, or at least MVP worthy season. I hope you're right because I'm a Yelich fan, but somebody who's missed time like every year for back issues always always gives me some pause. Um, I think a, a better surprise MVP discussion would be Teoscar Hernandez in LA. I know Mookie Betts is putting up great numbers, but Hernandez is is sneaky going to end up with 130 RBIs, I think, oh, I, because of I all the traffic that, in front of him. That bottom of the order for the Dodgers, like I, I picked Will Smith up as many leagues as I could, um, just because yeah, he. Bet, I mean, when you he have fourth and behind he has, Betts, Freeman, and Otani, that's that's like a dream scenario. That's like having a. That's like having sign it's like having you dr dan and myself and then you have the fourth hitter you know what i mean it's the same thing uh, it's crazy i know it reminds it's me of thing. those cleveland days in the 90s when it was albert bell and jim tomey and manny ramirez and all of them or joey bell rick, depending on rick manning yeah uh but yes i i think i think right now oh, chris atwater has a question mr mr alabama we call him is a breakthrough year for jaron duran i agree but you guys are less high. And why am I a Sox fan? And I'm biased. why I am a Sox fan, so I am biased. Um, sure, you you are biased. That's fine. Just like I think Volpe is going to be the breakout star of this year because I'm a Yankees fan. The emotions and our our love for our team is always going to make it. It's why Ross just sat there and argued about. Um, I know Ellie De La Cruz is going to strike out 300 times this year, but I still want him <laughs> as the best player on my team. It, it, he's a Reds fan, but. I agree with you that Jared Duran, he, he, he is a prospect pedigree. He's been, he hit really well all through the minors. Devin doesn't have as much power as I would like, but he's definitely got a good hit tool, can steal a base. He's going to score a lot of runs. Um, I just, I, I wish I could count for count on 20 home runs from him. And I don't know if I, you know, I like better him. Casey, you know, I like better in Boston. And I said it before the season, I think he'd be a 30, 30 guy is Tyler O'Neill. I, I think he's somebody that's like a steal well, of the so draft. So far, you, sound, you look pretty smart. He's like a top yeah, 10 I mean, fantasy producer. I, I said like him going to Boston with that short field and left. I mean, that helps that guy a lot. Um, you know, he he's going to have some bases. He's going to have home runs. I like Tyler O'Neill better than Duran. If you can get O'Neill instead of Duran, I like that a lot better for you. Um. I, I think it depends on what your team needs. I think Duran is a safer bet for batting average and runs scored. O'Neill is going to get you the power, and then they're both going to steal some bags. So um, O'Neill reminds me of a less successful Adolis Garcia, right? Like Adolis Garcia is that guy who strikes out a bunch, but the numbers he puts up and the hustle and the – I mean, he's built like a 
a body Have you builder seen like the that. I mean, they showed him in the World Series last year, and they showed him like opening day in Texas. And I, I'm not going to accuse anybody of anything illegal, but he got really big, really fast. And yeah. I mean, you still got to work. Down. I don't care how many steroids you do. You still got to go to the weight room and, and get bigger and stronger. But you got to see the difference of the size of this guy. I mean, he is, his whole body is different. It's crazy. So, all right. So before we sign off, anything else you want those people out there in fantasy land to be aware of? Any big stories for this weekend? Um. Well, the, who the, the Yankees? The Marlins are playing. There, there's some series coming up. Uh, let me let me just look real quick. Let me just look who's playing who this weekend. Um, right. uh, the Mets are at home against the Royals, um, which I think it should be a good series. The Royals are one of the hottest teams in baseball right now. That should be good. The Rockies are in Toronto. I think they were, I think the Rockies will get swept. That's my prediction. It should be, it should be a good series. It's a big, big series with Texas and Houston. That's probably the best series over the weekend, even though Houston's not playing well, but both those teams hate each other. Baltimore's at home against Milwaukee. That should be good. This is something that Casey, you'll be watching this. You'll be watching this every game. Are you ready? What's the that? Washington Nationals are at the Oakland A's. So, <laughs> do you think will be in Oakland? In all seriousness, that's not a joke. But let's just say it now. How many people do you think will be there, like an average over the weekend, like attendance wise for that game? It's at Oakland. It's at Oakland. I don't know. It's in that six thousand. Oh, I say two thousand. I say two thousand average. Six thousand. Right. What are you insane? Uh, so I'm we'll, hoping we'll, there's we'll, a few. We'll, we'll, I'm hoping we'll there's keep a few stats national stats fans out there. We'll I keep think... stats on that. The Angels are in Boston. Your Yankees are in Cleveland. So it's you against Doctor Dan, which is interesting. I like. I like. Yeah, that. he didn't invite me out there for a game. I'm kind of hurt. Yeah, I'm too. The Padres are at the Dodgers. That should be good. The, uh, yeah, Yamamoto pitching on Friday, which is always good. The Cubs are in Seattle. So, you know, there's there's some really good. Um, oh, good. The Reds are in the white at the White Sox. That's great. Um, there's really good baseball games this weekend. So I suggest if you guys have time, or you know, if you have time to watch a few games, it's always good to watch games if you're a fantasy player to know what's going on. Um, but yes, it should be a good weekend of baseball, which I'm excited for. Yep, and just keep your fingers crossed that your best starters don't suddenly have elbow strains or forearm tightness because oh it's I mean that every day it's happening. So yeah, I, I agree. And um and I know we have some guys that love golf and the Masters is this the weekend. The Masters is this weekend. I'm a fan. I really I don't enjoy golf watching it. I'm a horrible player. I'm banned some actually I'm banned from some uh, golf courses in LA. I accidentally For what? threw my Quick story. This is years ago. I had a little like, I don't know, anger issues. I'll say like with golf, like I would get really okay. upset. So I was playing in the, it was not a tournament, but it was like a, a bunch of friends. We all showed up and I missed like an easy putt. So I threw my, it was like, I threw my, I hit a, a, like an Asian couple. Yeah. It wasn't on purpose. I was just so angry. I just threw it and I just hit him in the back of the head. And so I was, <laughs> I was banned from, they weren't hurt, but I was banned from that course. And then, and then, um, and then after that, I got banned from another course for, for like almost the same thing for throwing my driver. Um, but I, I have anger issues when it comes to golf. So I, I kind of don't play anymore, but I, I enjoy watching the four majors. There you go. Um, All right. Well, there you go. But, but masters us open and enjoy the, the british open they, what do they call the british open now just the open is that what they call it just the open yep they call just it the, the open. open yeah so i i do enjoy it and i do like how the live golfers are in georgia playing it i think it's great it's great for golf and um you know uh, scotty scheffler uh, i think he's the guy to beat i mean again uh he's awesome what a golfer but we'll see i like rom because he went to this College at some school in Arizona. Casey, I forgot which one. Tell me. Uh, University of Arizona. No, Arizona State. John Ron went to Arizona State. He messed up. Uh, Go but yes, cats. it should be a great week. No, Ten doubles. Uh, but yes, it should be a great week. You All didn't right, say anything well, about you didn't, I'm wearing my slap shot shirt. I noticed that. I didn't want to. The Hanson you know, Brothers. The um, Hanson Brothers, you know, yeah. The Hanson Brothers with their numbers underneath. 
Um, if you haven't seen that movie, you should watch it immediately. It's one of the best sports movies. I don't know if ever. people like under the age of 30 are even aware that that movie exists. Paul Newman's in it. It's one of the best sports movies. Funny, funny, funny movies ever. Yes, you should watch it. And another movie, another show you should watch on Netflix. You get everything here on our show. I'm watching The Gentleman. And that show great too. It's it's a it's a it's it's it takes place in in uh, England, so everybody has British accents. But it's a great show. A lot of action, a lot of fun. I suggest you watch that also. There you go. All right. Well, Ross, thank you for all of the updates on what we should watch this weekend. Yes. I will see you yes. back here same time Tuesday. next week on Tuesday and Thursday, four o'clock on Tuesday, one o'clock Pacific. We talk about waiver wire and who to add. Thursdays, we talk more generally about fantasy baseball and strategy. Uh, and hopefully, Dr. Dan will be with us. But anyway, and we talk, I hope you have a great Netflix weekend. Netflix movies, we talk golf. We talk everything on this show. It's unbelievable. Thanks for watching, everybody. All right. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend, everybody.